Hallelujah, 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 my friend. Uh, let's pray, let's pray. God has great things for us. We are going to talk again about the rapture. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we call upon you, holy, holy, holy Father. You desire so much to touch those who will be watching. You desire so much to teach and to give revelation to your children. You long to hear us. You long to bless us. You long to make us support us. So God, this is the moment we are ready for you. My friend, wherever you are, get ready for the blessings of the Lord because he always do that. He always bless you. He is going to give you joy. He is going to give you peace. He is going to take away your burdens. He is going to solve your issues. He is going to take away the fear. Fear is a lying spirit. Fear must go. You know, yesterday we did receive a message from a prominent preacher. Uh, basically, he was telling people, hey, you better leave the United States right now. Go back to Africa. Uh, go back to uh, some other places. And uh, uh, if you're in Poland, if you're in Europe, you better make plans. Let me tell you. God said, I have given you the power to tread upon his serpents, scorpions, and overall the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. What we need is to know that Jesus is inside of us. We have to live like it. We have to possess the power of God. And then there is no need to fear. Greater is God in you, in me, in us, than the devil who is in the world. The power of God in you is more powerful than a nuclear bomb. And if ever they make that mistake and they release that thing on the face of the earth, you should not fear. You should pour inside of yourself and release the power of God and release the fire of God. My friend, the name of Jesus is above every other name. It's above nuclear bomb. It's above everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, there is no need to fear. There is no need to worry. But you must be awake, pray against all these things, and you must be active. You cannot watch Ukraine, uh, the helpless dying. You cannot watch the hospital being bombed. You cannot watch and do nothing. This is what happened exactly in Rwanda. When the war was happening, when even up to today, the people are being killed left and right the world watch and does nothing oh father raise up the moses all over the world in every nation in every continent let there be a moses who rises up to say no to pharaoh oh god in every continent every nation raise up the deliverers Raise up uh, the Gideon. Raise up the David. Who will not be afraid. But we go and fight the enemy. Oh God. Work through your people. My friend. You've got to do something. You cannot watch people dying. And just talk about it. Russia this. Russia that. The truth is that there are people who are dying. And whatever we need to do to stop it, we must stop it. There is a something you can do. There is a something I can do. 
The Lord comforted us yesterday and today he's comforting us again. It's he who is in charge of this world. It's not sorrow. It's not one world order. Please stop giving the power to the devil. Stop giving him the glory. Even the COVID happening, God knows. Even the war in Ukraine, God knows. See what is happening. The road has come down to break the world system. Yes, the world system will be broken. There will be a day, Visa, MasterCard, all of that will be broken. There will be a day, uh, many things that we rely on, many idols are going to be broken. That's what's happening right now. God is coming down to destroy uh, the world system that has said i am god that has threatened god's people that has threatened the righteousness god is coming to break all of that seeing all that is going on my friend i went to the book of matthew i went there uh matthew 24 Tomorrow I'm going to go in a mark. The next day I'm going to go in a look. I looked in Matthew 24 to see what God gives us as the signs of the end times. I went through Matthew 24. And my friend, as I read, I see that Many things have already happened. So I checked all those things that have been done, uh, accomplished, the prophecies that have been fulfilled. I found one prophecy which is not fully fulfilled. But it's in the fulfilling. The one uh, very, uh, Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now all presidents, now all kings have seen big miracle signs and wonders. They have not seen people rising from the dead. They have not seen, uh, you know, you having five uh, loaves of bread to feed thousands of people. They have not seen the food multiplying. And so, uh, where we are right now with Russia invading, Russia is a fulfilling prophecy. Russia is not a savior. Russia is not your deliverer. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. I checked on the people who are in Russia. What they are saying is very shocking. They don't even know there is a war in Ukraine. They have been told that there is a little operation going on because Nazis live in uh, you know, Ukraine. They are not being even told the truth. So Russia is not our deliverer, but through everything going on, God is working. Through everything that is going on, God is working. Through the invasion, do not sit there and think it's not coming bad. Everywhere, the Ukrainian refugee will go very soon. It's going to get there. I know because I've seen it in my country. This is more likely World War III. Sometimes we need to speak the truth even when it's hard to swallow. I told the member of my church, hey, I would like you to live like World War III is coming. And the preparation, most of all, is to 
be ready inside the spiritually. I have a food in my house. I have a photo that can probably last me three years. But my hope is not that. My hope is in God. Jesus is coming. So the nations of the earth, the kings, the queens, the presidents, they are going to see the gospel of the kingdom preached through miracle signs and wonders. And that is going to happen through the revival. The revival is at the door. The moment the nations are judged, Russia is being used to bring judgment to this world. Just like how Pharaoh was used. When judgment hit America, USA, Europe, Australia, Africa, people will repent. I was sharing with my friends how on September 9-11, when I went to church, I thought it's going to be a normal service. I was there probably 15 minutes before the service, when I got there, lo and behold, there is no place to park. Everybody went to church. Just because of 9-11, can you imagine if we see much more than 9-11 and God Almighty has spoken to me, he said, the judgment that is coming, Russia, uh, I mean, 9-11, uh, would it seem like a child's play? A child's play. So what is coming is really, it's tough. But through that, people will be saved. Revival will hit. And in the midst of the revival, that's when the rapture happens. In the coming days, I will share with you what I believe are the revelation God gave me about the rapture. I used to be pre-trip, but after I met the Lord face to face, I know when it's bad, we are still here. We are still here. And I will share with you what the Lord has revealed to me when we are going. I'm not going to give you a day or a date because I don't know. But be watching the signs, but more than watching, be serving God, be doing kingdom work, leading the Lord to Christ, going to the hospital, to the prison, healing the sick, Preaching the gospel to those who do not know. Doing the difference. Showing people how to get to heaven. Showing them that the devil is bad. So, are you ready? Let's talk about, let's talk about the rapture. I love that word so much that when you hear it, your spirit inside of you, is excited and is filled with joy. Why? Because it's the blessed hope. It's the blessed hope. This is now our home. Oh, hallelujah. One day Jesus is coming and he will catch us up. We meet him in the air. That's what I told you yesterday when we read First Thessalonians 5. Uh, 4, 16, 17. That the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice from heaven, uh, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. It does not matter whether you have been killed in a plane accident, and this part is over there, that part is over there, the other part is in the ocean. The Spirit of God will bring everything together. 
Hallelujah. Set it to set, uh, body part to body part, and the dead will rise. These are not, this is not everybody. It's the people who died in Christ. It's the people who did not die in their sins. It's the people who have believed and died in Christ. So it says then, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with Jesus. The Lord comfort one another. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Yes, the Lord will come. There are people who will never see death. Those people who are alive when he comes in the rapture, if they are ready, they'll never taste death. That's why it tells us here. Then we who are alive and remain. Yesterday we talked about why did he use the word remain? Because before the rapture, there will be big, big, big uh, tribulation going on all over the world. There will be big trouble. Uh, there will be so many problems going on, chaos, you know, and uh, we overcome. And he comes in the midst of it. He comes in the midst of it. But that's for him. When he comes, we're going to save it for next week. But you have to understand that we will eat those people who are alive. There are people who have been caught up before to heaven without dying. For example, Enoch. Enoch in the Bible, it says, Enoch was not he was and he was not because god took him because god took him hallelujah then there is another person who never died that is elijah i was reading that this morning it's beautiful basically god sent uh, the chariots of a fire and the horses of the fire in the whirlwind when Elijah is ready they come and they catch him yesterday we talked about the rapture we said what is the rapture the rapture the Greek word harpazo to cease to catch away woo, to catch up to pluck, to pull, to take by force. This is how much Jesus loves you. He will come and he will take you by force, remove you from this world of misery, remove you and take you to his side. I have 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, to confirm it to you what we are talking about, my friend. See, when we talk about the rapture, we must give you every word uh, that talks about it in the Bible so that you have a place where you can verify to see if those things are so. It talks about the resurrection. Behold, I tell you a mystery. First Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. Meaning, we will not all die. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. Those people who are ready, when Jesus comes, they will not die. All of a sudden, they will be changed. They will be caught up like how Elijah was caught up. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, remember, there will be a trumpet announcing the coming of the Lord. There will be a shout by the archangel. 
announcing the coming of the greatest king. Hallelujah. The trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. You see, he is repeating almost what we read in First Thessalonians chapter 4. So, at that time, death will be swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? There is a day we're going to sing that song. Oh, death, where is your sting? And then he says, the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, right now, I want to remind you, no matter what you are going through, God will give you victory. God does not give you defeat. God does never fail. Even if it doesn't happen today, even if they say they will do it next week, they don't do it next week, God wants you to know, hallelujah, that he is a God who never, never fails. He will do it. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable. See, do not focus on the little problem that you're going to do. There are all little problems before God. Even if it's a big mountain before him, it's a little problem. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toy is not even in the road. Our job right now is we get ready to enter the end of the age. God wants you to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We are not going to be lazy. Uh, rock ourselves in a room and say, oh, rapture, rapture is coming. Oh, no, 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 I need to move to the mountain. No, 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 you don't need all of that. Just focus on God. Be abounding in the work of Christ. So, Jesus will come for you. Jesus is going to come for his people. We have fought many battles. We have gone through many things. But God will come and fight for you, and He will come and rapture His people. There are many people, as I told you, who have been caught up in heaven. There are even people who have been caught up while still on earth. They get a tour, they go to heaven, and God brings them back. For example, Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we see where God gives him a tour and bring him back. Why not? What's wrong with daddy showing up and taking the kid to Chick-fil-A to have lunch together and bring him back home? In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, And three and four, Paul is telling us his experience. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or out of the body I do not know, God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. You know, in heaven there are many levels. Uh, but the level where we have been, my church and I, was the third level of heaven where God has his throne. And that's where Paul, one time, he was caught up there. 
Then, another time, God decided to give him another tool. He continued, he says, And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows. I know how such a man was caught up into paradise and hid in inexpressible world which a man is not permitted to speak. There are different levels of heaven, different level of the kingdom of God. When you go up there, everybody is not together. You go according to your reward. And that's why I'm telling you, do not sit and be a Christian who go to church, go back home, eat eggs, a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But be a wise believer, a man of God, a woman of God. Don't just go to church, but serve. Serve God. Serve God. Every time you serve, every time you give your offering, every time you give your tithes, every time you worship, every time you volunteer every time you evangelize all those things every time you're building your rewards in heaven so there are people who have been caught up many times to heaven so the rapture is real more real than you are. And heaven is more real than the earth. Those are the things that you are going to find when you get to heaven. You realize, oh my goodness, it's more real than the earth. So we are going to read Matthew 24, which is a place where there is a very clear scripture that talks about the rapture matthew 24 verse 37 to 41 for the coming of the son of man will be just like the days of noah i do believe when the rapture happens it will be like the days of Noah, as the Bible said. That means it's the days where there is life like normal. I do not believe it when Antichrist is completely taken over and the wrath of God has been pulled upon the earth because Noah was taken before the wrath. Uh, Lot was taken before the, the rough. So it will be like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. During the reign of Antichrist, the, especially the last three years and a half, you will know that we cannot buy and sell unless you have the mark of the beast. So the rapture, when it happened, it will be in the days like that. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will it, the coming of the Son of Man be? Okay, are you ready? This is where you find a great scripture about the rapture. Verse 40 and 41. Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. There will be two men in the field. See, there is work going on as normal. People are farming. Back in the days, Uh, John could not, uh, I mean, Jesus could not tell us or whoever wrote the gospel, you know, people would be driving in a car. There was no car. So they are using what was there back then. 
So back in the days, even when I was growing up in a country where there was not much technology, the everyday work was, you know, farming, taking care of the cattle, a few people here and there working in the offices, but not many. So there is work as normal. Two men in the field, it looks like a normal day. Uh, one will be taken. This is where people miss it. The word taken here, I will bring it back tomorrow. We study more deeply. I forgot my notes. But taken here, if you study the original, it is to be taken. It, they only use this to mean being taken in intimacy. To be taken in a friendly manner. Like when a bridegroom come and take his bride. Taken here, it's a bridegroom taking his bride for a getaway. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus told me face to face that he would take us to heaven in the rapture. And when you get there, while we wait for everything to finish on the earth, the mess to finish, the Lord says that, you know, there will be a banquet, but he will give us uh, a tour of heaven and many wonderful, wonderful things. I told the Lord, the Lord, I've been working hard, staying up late, praying, and at the time, my whole church, uh, many members were being taken to heaven and here and I was taking care of them. Do you think that we slept? No, we will go to bed at 2 o'clock. Then I have to wake up at 6 o'clock to take care of my son. It was really a tough time, but beautiful, beautiful. So I told the Lord, I said, God, when we get to heaven, I'll be sleeping for the next like month. Please don't come wake me up because I will be sleeping. He said, you... You cannot sleep. You love me so much. You'll be worshiping all day long, all night long, if we can call it night. So one will be taken, one will be left. Taken here is to be taken in the rapture. It's not in the judgment. There are many people who are preaching wrong in it. I tell you, go to BibleHub.com. Then in the search, put in uh, Matthew 24, 40, and then click lexicon, and it will bring the word, each word by word, and you can see the Greek origin, the Greek origin. And when you see the Greek origin, you see that it's pararambano, which means being taken in a friendly manner. Hallelujah. Two women will be grinding at the mill. Uh, you see, there is work going on. Maybe, uh, you know, it's two people working in salon. Uh, two people working at Walmart. Two people working in the office of so-and-so. And so, there is work going on. But we know... During the very, very bad time of the great tribulation, Christian will be hiding. There is no work going on, friends. There is no work going on. So one will be taken and one will be left. This can help you to answer uh, about, is Jesus really coming at the end of the great tribulation? I have seen the Lord face to face. I have asked him about this question. Let me tell you, Jesus is not very talkative. Jesus doesn't come and talk to you and give you paragraph after paragraph. He is a very good teacher. He helps you to understand scripture by giving you tips, by giving you clues, okay? And I will share those things with you next week, Monday. But tomorrow we will come and talk more about the rapture.
So you need to be ready. You need to be ready. But being ready, I'm not telling you, leave your work, leave school. You leave work when God tells you, I need you to go evangelize 27. Yes, you can do that. But to be ready is to help the people around you who are suffering. To be ready is to stop evil. To be ready is to read the scripture and live up to it. To be ready. Let me tell you how my church is reading we've been reading for many many years this is how we get ready every day wake up at the dawn's hour four o'clock there are people who wake up at three o'clock wake up pray 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 when you pray god will give you the direction for the day the day during the day it's not pray 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 work 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 but as you work you pray you watch and you pray then uh, when you get home, take care of your family, spend the time with them, love them, provide for them. At night, corporate prayer. Go to corporate prayer. It's different from your personal prayer. Where if your church is not meeting, you have a family come together. This is not about politics in the church. This is not about you starting your own thing. But hey, core brothers and sisters, Hold the hands and pray together. And it is to prepare with much prayer. Because in praying, God gives you the power. You need to fight the spirit of Antichrist, which is in the land today. Then you read the word of God to know the voice of God. That's what will help you. Read the word of God. Now, also, be full of the Holy Spirit. If you do not speak in tongues, if you're not full of the Holy Spirit, you listen to this message, please call our church 303-371-1626. We will pray for you. We will make sure you are full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, because uh, when you are full of the Holy Spirit, that's only when you can really fight the devil and win. So everybody, each one of you, need to speak in the tongues. In my church, even the kids who are two, even anyone who can speak, they all speak in the tongues. It's not possible to come to blessing holy fire and you don't speak in the tongues. And that's what God wants for you. So let's pray. You know who is right there with you. You know who is here. Jesus. Jesus, holy, holy, move among us, move among your people, equip them, Lord Jesus, to defeat the spirit of Antichrist, equip the saints to defeat deception, do not follow those people. Do not follow the news. You need to investigate yourself. Do not follow your own understanding. But go to the field where those things are happening. Watch what's happening in Ukraine. Don't go by this. People say, oh, Putin this, uh, Zelensky this. No, you yourself go and see what is happening. There are many ways you can know what's happening. You need to see. You need to know. And then use your discernment. Your discernment will increase. As you pray in tongues every day. As you read the word of God every day, my friend. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than everyone. Compete with him. Compete with him. Hey, the Lord loves you. He has blessed you. Everything that you need, just receive because the Lord is right there with you. Everything that weighs, let it go right now, right now. And my friend, share this with many people that you know need this. Do not forget to connect with me, theblessingqualify.com. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to support us in any way that God will lead you to. There are times I say, hey, I need you to pray for Pastor Christian. I need you to pray for the whole church. 
But there are times I say, I need you uh, to support them financially. Whatever the Lord tells you, do it. I don't do this for money. I quit my job many, many years ago, 2006 to be exact. And you know what? I live by faith. He has always taken care of me and he will do it for you and for us again and again. I love you, my friend. Until we meet again, be ready. Keep watching, praying. And do not forget to smile and to be happy.